Okay, the plot is that all mankind is doomed, no matter how fucking sexy and muscular and intelligent, because there's zombies that have stolen the metal of the foundries that are endlessly numerous that are coming for them. So the emperor on the throne, he is a new metal. He is energizing out and as his will is carried out and he kills through his troops sections of the planet especially down around the south pole then he reverse engineers because he's already dead but undying into the flesh rotted computing spikes that they have at different points around where they're strong and then he takes over the whole planet and uh, everything is restored to green. Hey, Henry Cavill, uh, DeVille, Smelly Hill. Uh, anyways, um, here's a little precursor to uh, Warhammer because I think you know Warhammer, but I don't think the audience knows Warhammer. So let me just describe it because I'm not sure whether or not the plot of Warhammer that's currently available is actually the plot of Warhammer or, or whether we just came up with it so I'm just talking about it right now as if it's new to everyone and they thought they could stole it from me. I assume it's, it's that because it doesn't make any sense otherwise. So if that's the case, fuck you, pay me. <laughs> Continuing. Um, there's an emperor. There's two parts of this story. There's part one where, you, you know, there's an emperor that's lived for a long time and saved all of humanity into space combat and fought many different varied types of evil creatures. A one that's nothing but an infection that has a bunch of rusty armor guys that attack people. Uh, orcs like from World of Warcraft pretty much just pretty much stolen. So wait, these rusty guys are like, like robots that are rusty in space? No, they just have rusty armor. It's medieval. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. And, and for some reason, Warhammer, they have all the good weapons and the power armor. And the orcs are, like, bizarrely spacefaring, but also, like, bizarrely, like, medieval with, like, almost, like, wood ships and cannons comedically. I don't even know what the hell Weird. they're like. Yeah. So... There's these various different factions that are all ridiculous and absurd. Some guy who grew up on the streets and delivers his own type of justice and then joined the Empire, destroying everybody. He grew up on a world with only rain and lightning. All the silly things that you can imagine. Now, why I was saying about part one and part two is, there's the part where the Emperor's alive, there's the part where the Emperor gets killed, sort of, but lives on a throne as he slowly... You know, a gold throne, as there's wires in him, as he communicates with everybody out everywhere imposing his will. So, as Henry Cavill, what part of this is he going to play? Because there's vast time space here throughout the Warhammer series. What is he going to do, right? He needs to think about this, because he doesn't think. He's a fucking idiot. So, what are you going to do, Henry Cavill? And here's the final part. The Emperor comes from the South Pole back when it was, uh, you know, on Earth, when it was green were there mastodons? I guess, mastodons, sure. And uh, that's like the most important part to remember is that like they have an empire from there so it could supposedly happen in real life like as if it's been buried in ice as they left the planet or something to conquer the universe. Yeah. So it's sort of like in a galaxy long, long ago, but not really at all. As absolutely not. It's more like we're in the same time space and they could be out there fighting. So they leave as things get frozen, maybe? Who knows? Yeah, during a period of an ice age. Yeah. Uh, I'm probably inventing the script right now, so you guys fucking need to stop stealing from me. It makes time space really difficult when you don't support and you only thieve. So we don't know what we're dealing with. Yeah, so other than that, um, they scream things like blood for the blood god and skulls for the skull throne, you know, like blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throne. So, uh, Henry Cavill, prepare to bleed out of your fucking throat. I don't, you, you like this role? You like Warhammer? Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, it's just a bunch of that and a bunch of seething waves of giant people in mech suits blasting other people that are infected demon dudes from some creature that infects everything and they're all wearing rusty armor and are zombies that are all, you know, covered in sores. 
Yeah. And there's other enemies too, but I don't give a shit. I just looked it up really quick. Alright. So the son of the Emperor's Will, who would be played by me, is called uh, Silvaris uh, of the Nightingales. And he leads a brigade of men that are made out of metal almost entirely. They have no more flesh other than a heart, not even a brain. And their heart is mostly, you know, because they eat a special diet because they're just destroyed. Like, you know, they're, they're just mostly metal. That's mostly just golden rye, some golden honey, and some golden nuts. And that goes to their heart, which is mostly metal, too into the CPU processing and that's what you would call like food even though that's not really food and they uh they have um They have their, their spinal bones unfold out of their backs into what appears to be wings as they use propulsion from the magnetism of their hearts to rocket jump short distances that then fold back into their bodies as they, uh, you know, uh, use swords made out of pure light energy that are generated from their hands, from their glowing veins that come from their heart, to stab random, you know, disgusting creatures and, you know, like, you know, different types that are, you know, completely dead. And when, you know, their swords touch them, they burst into flames along the wounds, and it, you know, like, spikes energy into the creatures' hearts, which make them blow up as they, uh, you know, have incredible acrobatic skill and speed and uh, are frictionless on every surface except for when they need to have friction as if they're disengaging and re-engaging with gold to silver magnetism so that you know they're either negative or positive charged on rock for example or in rain while where it's slippery while it's splashing up or uh, you know in the dirt so that they can slide when they need to in the soft loam or grip you know impossibly uh, I guess that would be, you know, cool, and uh, I'd like to play that role, that, that sounds amazing, and, uh, you know, <laughs> if I could be CG'd in, hey, that'd be pretty awesome.